Arguably the most powerful form of heat transfer, when it works, is evaporation. The basic idea is that when a fluid evaporates, it takes an enormous amount of energy to cause it to evaporate. The latent heat, which full of water, is a whopping 2 million joules per kilogram. That heat has to come from somewhere, and it comes from cooling down its environment. This, for example, is how people keep cool when exercising. When you're exercising, if you're an elite athlete, you can be using um, several hundred watts of power in your body, and that has to get away. And if it's a hot day, that's mostly going to go by sweat. A water on the surface of your body, which evaporates, uh, carrying away that 2 million joules per kilogram. It can be used to cool houses down. Uh, evaporative coolers basically have a fan that blows air through a pad or a metal wire pad of some description which has water poured on it. So that water evaporates and cools down the air. Works very well in Canberra, but not in very humid places. This technique is also used in heat pipes to move heat from one place to another. In a heat pipe, you typically have some fluid which evaporates at close to the temperature you're wanting to work at. So let's say you want to cool down a computer chip that might be at 50 Kelvin, 50 centigrade, you might need something that would evaporate at maybe 40 centigrade. So this part of the tube you put near the hot thing, heat is conducted into it and causes your fluid, whatever it is, to evaporate. The evaporated fluid flows down the heat pipe and then condenses at the other end, the cool end. You typically have some sort of wick to allow the fluid to go back, ready to evaporate again and travel down. And these are widely used in all sorts of technological applications, including computers. Here are some heat pipes in a PC, for example. For example, here you can see there's a chip with a large copper block on top of it, and the heat is conducted into the copper block, then goes down the heat pipe in the form of fluid to the fan here, which will cool it all down and blow that heat away. How do you calculate things? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, the heat carried away is equal to the mass that evaporates times the latent heat. But how do you work out the mass that evaporates? Well, that is not simple. Evaporation is insanely complicated, depending on temperature, humidity, wind, all sorts of things. Uh, by and large, give up. Uh, measure it experimentally. There are a bunch of rule of thumb equations for different situations you can find on the web, but none of them work very well. This is something that's so complicated that unless you want to spend months on a supercomputer, it's a lot faster just to actually measure it. Note that fluids can evaporate at well below boiling point. I mean, for an athlete, the sweat evaporates on your body even though your skin is not at 100 degrees centigrade. What's happening is some of the atoms are moving faster than others. You have some atoms going really fast and some atoms going slowly. And what's going to happen is the very few atoms that are going really fast will break their bonds and escape and evaporate, just leaving all the slow-moving atoms behind. So that's how, even though you're below boiling point, water can evaporate. And it's why it cools things down, because the fast-moving atoms have gone carrying energy away with them. So, regardless of whether you're at the boiling point or below it, it's pretty simple, just mass times the latent heat.